Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church's YouTube worship service for May 9th, 2021, the sixth Sunday of Easter. A couple announcements I want to highlight before we begin our service of worship. First, thanks to all those who showed up yesterday for our work day to help keep our property well maintained. Also, thank you for all your food donations. Social Concerns members collect food at the house in 25 Knight Avenue each Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. If you'd like to donate but are unable to make this time, you may contact the church office to arrange a drop-off there. College scholarships are now available by contacting the church office. Details about requirements went out this past week through our Friday updates. If you're not sure if you qualify for a scholarship, please contact me. Deadline for submissions is June 4th. We will begin weekly in-person worship on June 6th with one service at 10 o'clock a.m. You must sign up in advance by calling the office 939-4411 or by email janet441 at comcast.net. It's important because we do have a limit on number of people in the building with social distancing and also we have a contact list in case anybody at one of our services should, con should test positive within day, a day or two after the service. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins unto God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our first reading from the book of Acts, the tenth chapter. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm number 98. Sing a new song to the Lord. He has done marvelous things. Whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O oh Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with harp, with a harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. 
Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Here ends the psalm. Now we have special music by Mike Steet, Dear Younger Me. I could tell you everything I've learned so far You could be one step ahead Of all the painful memories still running through my head I wonder how much different things would be Dear younger me Do I give some speech about how to get the most out of your life? Do I go deep and try to change the choices that you'll make? Cause they're the choices that I made. And even though I love this crazy life, sometimes I wish it was a smoother ride. Dear younger me, Dear younger me If I knew then what I know now Condemnation would have no power My joy, my pain would never been my worth If I knew then what I know now would not be hard to figure out what I would have changed if I had heard. Dear younger me, it's not your fault. You were never meant to carry this beyond the cross. Dear younger me, dear younger me, holy, you are righteous, you're one of the redeemed, set apart a brand new heart, you are free indeed, every mountain, every valley, each heartache you will see, every moment brings you closer to who you meant to be, to younger me, to younger me. You are holy, you are righteous, you're one of the redeemed, set apart a brand new heart, you are free indeed. You are holy, you are righteous, you're one of the redeemed, set apart a brand new heart, you are free indeed. Dear younger me. Our second reading is from the first letter of John, the fifth chapter. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with water and blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that you may joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you watch the evening news, you will hear ongoing reports about COVID-19, destruction of communities due to adverse weather, the killing of black individuals by police, and the crisis at the border, or in some cases, the situation at the border. Crisis or situation? Well, you decide. What I miss are some of the lighter religious stories that seem to be everywhere during the first decade of this new millennium. Of course, the millennium is still new because we have got 980 years until the next one. But during that first decade, people were seeing Jesus all over the place. It reminds me of the 12th chapter of John's Gospel when some Greeks approached Philip and asked, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Of course, Philip told Andrew and the two of them in turn told Jesus. However, if Philip lived today, he might tell them to go get a potato chip, a Cheeto, or even a grilled cheese sandwich. It seems as if the places the face of Jesus could be found were everywhere, especially in food. People were seeing Jesus in fish sticks, pancakes, banana peels, oranges, breakfast tacos, pierogies, and even a pizza. And Jesus is not alone. The Virgin Mary has appeared on a tortilla shell and some drops of coffee on a spoon, and even in tree bark. Of course, my personal favorite was Mother Teresa appearing in a muffin. When I think of these sightings I, of Jesus, I often think of the song, Looking for God, or Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places. I mean, you could actually turn into song, Looking for God in All the Wrong Places. I spent a lifetime looking for you. Cinnabons and grilled cheese sandwiches were never true. I have to stop here because if I can go any further, the video could be flagged for copyright infringement. We don't want to do that. In our lesson from 1 John, John gives, paints us a picture of God in Jesus and what it means to be a child of God. There is a resent, a re, something redemptive that is going on here in this lesson. John focuses our attention on the fact that our faith in Jesus turns us into children of God and makes us members of God's family. As children of the Lord, we are to love one another, love God, and obey his commandments. If we do these things, we're going to be given a surprising victory. Whatever is born of God, says John, conquers the world. Conquering the world, well, that's even better than a jelly roll Jesus. But what do these words really mean? It's important for us to break this passage down and then put it back together. John begins by telling us that everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. Each of us is on a search for God, a search that is motivated by a deep desire to be connected to our Creator. Lori Caffs of Annandale, Virginia tells the story of her eight-year-old daughter, Grace, an only child. Lori often hears Grace after she's gone to bed whispering in her room. Sometimes Lori hears Grace's footsteps at night, scaring around the house retrieving a doll or stuffed animal. One day Grace was whispering and Lori asked her what she was doing. I'm playing hide and seek with God, Mom. Lori laughed and told her daughter, Gracie, honey, you don't think God can find you anywhere you hide? She rolled her eyes and said, Mom, I'm looking for God. Each of us in our own way is looking for God. For some, the search ends quickly, and for others, it is a lifelong quest. The good news is that we can find God in Jesus Christ, the one who is the human face of God. And when we find God in Jesus, we become a member of God's family. We cease to be an only child and become part of an enormous family of faith. And John goes on to say that everyone who loves the parent loves the child. 
This is a reminder that there can be no distinction between love of God and love of our fellow children of God. Now this can be an enormous challenge, especially when our brothers and sisters are really getting on our nerves, but there's an upside to our efforts. Love actually improves our health and happiness. John goes on to elaborate that we are to love and obey God and his commandments. According to this verse, our love of one another is not primarily an emotion or an expression of affection but instead it is a life of obedience to God's commandments. If you say you love your parents, show up by honoring them. If you say you love your spouse, show up by not committing adultery. If you say you love your neighbor, show up by not stealing, envying, murdering, or making false accusations against him. When it comes to love, actions do, in fact, speak louder than words. For the love of God is this, says John, in case we missed the point, that we obey his commandments. Love and obedience, they go together, according to 1 John. You truly cannot have one without the other. Here John is in accord with James, the brother of Jesus, in his letter. Be doers of the word, not merely hearers. Obedient doers of the word know instinctively that loving words have to be translated into loving actions. John makes this point so vividly when he writes, If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, What is the good of that? Love and obedience belong together, right along with faith and works. It's the way that God has designed the world, which is why John can say that God's commandments are not burdensome. He knows that they are very good for us and good for all our brothers and sisters. So what is the message here? It's clear that something much more powerful is happening according to this text. The power of God comes to us through our faith in Jesus, our love for God and our love for one another and our obeying of God's commandments. Faith, love, and obedience are going to guard us and guide us much more effectively than a grilled cheese Jesus. Should we call that sandwich a grilled Jesus? In fact, the power of God that comes to us as faithful believing children is they were going to conquer the world. You conquer the world when you mix faith, love, and obedience together. John says that this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Jesus is truly a Savior, and by trusting in Him, we are given victory over the world. Not just triumph over a personal obstacle or professional challenge. No, victory over the world. This means that our faith in Christ will keep us connected to God, no matter what life throws at us. Our spiritual link will remain strong in spite of frustrations and failures, breakdowns and betrayals. As Paul writes to the Romans, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing will separate us. Absolutely nothing. That's victory. That's world conquest. That's the power of a super savior. It's clear that this victory has nothing to do with domination and everything to do with transformation. Jesus changed the world forever when he gave his life on the cross, and we follow his path when we imitate him with lives of sacrifice and service. Jesus conquered the world and its death-dealing powers by rising to new life, and we show our commitment to his way of responding to darkness, despair, and evil with light, hope, and goodness. As Christians, our goal should never be to crush the world. Instead, it should be to change it. When we do this work, we achieve the kind of goal that is pleasing to the Lord. Christ's ministry is advanced when we practice faith in Jesus, love of God and neighbor, and obedience to God's commandments. This is true victory, and this is the best kind of world conquest. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now we have special music from Bob Kramer and Harry Bell. Come Christians, join to sing.
merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, you call your church to live as a community of love and you nurture its witnesses and service. Give your people the will to serve others in your name. Your creation rings out in joy at your great gifts. Raise up stewards of all your blessings and teach us to live in harmony with your wishes that our lives might bear fruit for others. You show us how to live in joy and peace. Remove turmoil among nations and the peoples of the world and form servants who will strive for an end to war and violence. You abide us with us through your love. Make this congregation a place where fear is calmed and all people are honored as brothers and sisters in Christ. We give you thanks for the gifts of birthdays. And today we honor the birthday of Lynette Poulton. May she celebrate her day with joy and thanksgiving for all that you blessed her with. You care for us as a loving parent. Bless all mothers who are raising and have raised their children in faith, that they may be loved, honored, and appreciated as they continue to walk the path set before them. For an end to hate crimes and violent attacks against others, bring calm, peace, and understanding to those who vent their anger and frustration at those who are innocent of any wrongdoing. Give strength and healing to all those who have the coronavirus. Drive out the virus and heal all parts of the body that have been affected. For the people of India, that they may find the strength and resources to curb their most recent outbreak as their medical system and society are on the verge of catastrophe. God and protect doctors, nurses, and all hospital staff as they treat the infected. Comfort the dying and those who stand by them. Give life to those who are working with the public to go for employees, delivery people, gas station attendants, cashiers, store clerks, utility workers, police officers, postal employees, waiters and waitresses, strengthen and protect them as they continue to provide essential services to us. Give continued guidance for President Biden and his advisors during these difficult times. We continue to pray for the safety as troops are deployed throughout the world, especially for those who are known to us, Andre Flamini and Jordan Wilson. You gather up the sick in your healing arms and hold them in your care. Relieve the pain of all who suffer and guard them from all danger. Bring your healing power to those who are close to us as we name them in our hearts and out loud. Lord, we pray for anyone having problems with bones or blood. In the name of Jesus, I come against the root and cells that are affected, commanding every cancer cell to die and the bone marrow to produce pure, healthy blood. Lord, restore the affected organs and tissues and multiply the defense of good cells to overcome all the problem cells and areas. You have blessed us with saints who have gone before us in lives and embodied your ways. Encourage us by their witness to follow you in great, greater faithfulness. This morning we remember the life and witness of Leonard Watson, Dorothy King, Kitty Otero, Anna Ledridge, Don Dot Phillips, Lillian Small, and Lillian Kahoot. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.